Hi everyone, in this video we'll continue with conditionals and we'll talk about switch statements and conditional expressions aka ternary operators. So remember previously we've talked about if else um, and today we're going to finish everything out by talking about these other two ways of expressing conditionals. Switch statements. Now the reason you would use a switch statement is when there are several distinct values for a single variable and it can be easier than doing a bunch of nested ifs or doing a giant compound condition. Let me illustrate via an example. Let's suppose that we have a user input their birth year, which I'm going to save as an int, int year. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell the user which animal they are associated to in the Chinese zodiac. If you are not familiar, the Chinese zodiac breaks up each year in, according to a 12 year cycle. The birth year that you have mod 12 will be associated to one of those um, elements in the cycle, which is an animal. For example, if you are born, uh, if you were born in 1989, you would be year of the snake. The way that you would write switch statement using these 12 cases is as follows. So remember that we had the user give us the year and now we're going to mod it by 12, which is going to give us a number from 0 to 11. So I actually have the distinct cases of 0 through 11. And so each of those cases are going to be saved. Um, so I'll have case 0, case 1, case two, case three, these are the actual numbers that year mod 12 will be. And then at the end of each case, uh, I will have this break statement. So there's always a case, some number or some value, uh, just like here, and then it's gonna end in a break. Good, so basically going through, I can see, okay, I'm if the year mod 12 is zero then it's going to print monkey and then break it's not going to look at the rest of the statements it's just going to escape out of that code uh, on the other hand maybe you have to keep going and you're going to come all the way down to like case seven and so it's checked zero one two three four five six now it's going to check seven and it's going to get rabbit and it's going to break and it's going to go out and now uh, the last thing i want to point out in this piece of code is um, you can have what's called a default value um, it would have been possible to write case 11 here and have it print out sheep, um, but it's also possible to use a default, which is just means none of the other cases worked out. So this is the final value. It is up to you um, to decide in whatever situation you're in, whether it's appropriate to use default or whether you should have more cases. Cool. So now with the example and just a preview of what the code looks like, let's talk about the rules for switch statements. Switch statements will only take a byte, a short int, or a char. So when I wrote things like case zero, those are ints, and that's the only thing I can put there, right? I could also do like case A, the letter A, things like that. But you have a limited number of things that the switch statements will take, and you have to hard code them in. These conditions must be exactly equal. Now, you may use the default case, as I mentioned, and it just executes if none of the cases apply. And as I mentioned before, once one case becomes true, the rest of the cases will not be checked. Good. Now, you might wonder whether you want to use a switch or an if. Um, it doesn't really matter if you use an if statement or a switch statement. Um, it doesn't change the efficiency of the code or anything like that. It's really just up to you. Now, one thing I will point out to you is every switch statement can be written as an if statement, but there are if statements that cannot be written as switch statements. And I'll leave you with the question, why can you not do that? Let's look at another example, which is this um, multi-condition switch statements. Um, before I was writing like case zero, case one, case two, and so on and so forth for each individual case that I had, but there might be some situations 
where you might have a multi condition. What that means is you will have a piece of code where the first maybe like four cases together um, have a certain rule associated with them and you only have a break afterwards. So it's basically gonna check, is it zero, uh, one, two, three, or four? Um, and after it goes through, and if it finds a case that works, it's going to print F. Otherwise it'll move on and here's like a single case as we've seen before. Um, here's another group together, six and seven. Eight is by itself and nine and 10 are grouped together again. And of course there's a default score at the end. So this is one way that it might be reasonable to use switch statements. Um, it might, for whatever reason, it might make the logic a little bit simpler or shorter to write um, as compared to a chained if else block. Let's move on to talking about conditional uh, expressions, AKA ternary operators. The conditional expression or a conditional ternary operator uh, can assign a value based on the result of a condition. It's basically just shorthand for if else. The syntax for this is something like this. Result is equal to some Boolean condition, question mark, value one, colon, value two. So basically we're gonna check this sum condition. And if it's true, then you're going to have result be equal to value one. And if it's false, it will be equal to value two. Now you could write this again as an if statement. If some condition is true, set result equal to value one, else set it to value two. Um, now you can do that. Logically it's all the same, but this is shorter and maybe a little bit more convenient for you to write sometimes. So let's look at the conditional ternary operator and compare it to an if statement. So I have um, int num is equal to two and then string status where if num is less than three, I wanna set status to be low and otherwise set status to be high. And you can just sort of count out like how many symbols it took you to write this as compared to something like status is equal to num less than three question mark low and then colon uh, high. So this just takes way fewer characters to write. So this is a nice thing to do if you just wanna set a value based on whether something is true or false. Um, it, it's fewer characters to type total and in some cases may just make your logic look a lot clearer as compared to this if statement, which just gets kind of long and kind of bulky. To finish things off, I just want to say that Java has three types of conditional statements, the if else, the switch case, and the conditional ternary operator, which is that question mark and colon. It is really up to you in most cases, which one you wanna use as is you know most convenient or whatever makes the most sense to you in that, um, in that situation. But you should understand how to do all three of these and how to write different cases um, and different true false scenarios using any of these three. So that's it. That's all I have for you for this particular set of slides. Thanks for watching.